the revolutionary struggle of the Kurdish people gained media attention in 2013, following the triumph of the Rojava revolution and the role that the defense forces played in defeating Daesh, also known as the Islamic State. However, this struggle began in the 1970s in northern Kurdistan, when a group of Kurdish students and workers organized to fight for the autonomy of Kurdistan, which was occupied by Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. The fight in Rojava caught the world's attention, not only because it was a struggle between popular self-defense forces against Daesh, but because it had women fighting on the front lines. The Women's Protection Units, known by the acronym YPJ, were covered extensively by the world's media. However, the corporate media has never been interested in delving into the story of how these women organize themselves and for what purpose. The revolutionary process in Kurdistan has as its fundamental thread the women's revolution. They have been present since the founding of the PKK, the Kurdistan Workers' Party. Since then, thousands of women have joined the struggle, leading to the creation of autonomous women's movements, and in 1993, to the creation of guerrilla forces composed solely of women, which would give rise to the YPJ in Rojava. The revolution in Rojava further internationalized the Kurdish revolutionary movement, and since then, more and more internationalists have joined the struggle. The revolution also caught the attention of the hegemonic powers of capitalist modernity, which have attacked it from its inception to this day. In 1999, intelligence agencies from the United States, Israel, and Turkey organized a plot against Abdullah Asalan, one of the founders of the PKK and the father of democratic confederalism. The plot culminated with his kidnapping in Kenya and deportation to Turkey. Osalan was sentenced to death, which was later converted to life imprisonment. Since then, he has been held in total isolation on the island of Imrali and under psychological torture to this day. The criminalization of the party and its support network has only intensified, as do the internal and external attacks. Since 2015, the Turkish state, with its military technological support from NATO, has taken a more active and aggressive stance throughout the Middle East and beyond. Erdogan and the fascist coalition regime that now rules Turkey have moved on to pursue expansionist dreams. Since then, four incursions have been carried out in Rojava. Turkey has played a key role in the conflicts between Armenia and Azerbaijan, Libya, Cyprus, northern Iraq, and in southern Kurdistan. The Turkish plan is to encompass southern Kurdistan, northern Iraq, and Rojava, northwestern Syria, in order to gain new territories in the revision of the Treaty of Lausanne in 2023, adding these regions to its national territory and to appropriate their natural resources, which are essential to the decaying Turkish economy. On the 18th of April of this year, the Turkish fascist state once again attacked the regions of Zap and Avashin. And ever since then, from these two weeks, the friends are resistance once more. The Turkish state is again using chemical weapons against our friends. The people in the diaspora, the Kurdish community, the internationalists, the revolutionary movements, they are all rising up in all parts of the world against this occupation and once more this invasion of the fascist state. The same day that the operation started in southern Kurdistan, in the mountains regions, in Shengal, the Iraq army also attacked the positions of Yebeshe and Yejeshe. And uh, the community, the people of Shengal, the Yazidi community, they gave the promise to resist the attacks. They gave the promise to defend their land. It's really important that people know what's going on here in Kurdistan. It's really important to people to take action against this occupation attacks, against this genocidal politics of the Turkish fascist state. And we want to make a call for all internationalists, for all revolutionary struggles, to be active in this moment, to defend the revolution, to defend Kurdistan. So I would like to make a call for all those people to, to stand up, to rise up, 